But is this shaping up to be a two-way race between the backroom advisor and the star candidate from Quebec, or will another candidate jump in? And are the rules around leadership, are they actually fair? We've got one potential leadership candidate here, NDP MP Nathan Cullen, is with us now from Quebec City where the caucus is meeting. Mr. Cullen, uh, let's guess right on the table here. Are you considering running for the NDP leadership? Yeah, absolutely. I'm considering it. I'm considering it with my family and also supporters across the country to see whether uh, my name in the race would make uh, the kind of difference people are hoping to see if the voice that I bring and have brought in Parliament uh, for the last seven years is something that they want engaged in this debate. But I, I've given myself another you know, week to two weeks to try to figure out if that, that support is there because I'm not interested in just putting a name on a ballot. I, wa I want to be in it to win it, and that means uh, having that kind of depth and breadth of support across this country. Do you have MPs that are already supporting you? Yeah, a couple of them are. We're sort of working through um, what they want to see. I mean, they know me, obviously. These, these folks have been around, but they want to see how the, ra the race is shaping up. And I think sometimes with in endorsations, certainly high-profile ones, caucus members, there's some strategy that I'm just learning, frankly. I've never been in one of these before. Uh, that you would want to lay it out. But I'm, I'm being real cautious with them. I'm saying until I figure this thing out with my supporters and my family, I'm not going to lead you down the garden path. I want to, if, if I launch into this leadership race, I want to make sure it's for all the right reasons and that, that we've got a decent chance and that everything is on the table for everyone to see. You talk about endorsements. Brian Topp, former NDP party leader, uh, party president rather, uh, had the endorsement of Ed Broadbent. Pat Martin, one of your colleagues, said that's the holy grail of endorsements. Several MPs have come out in support now of Thomas Mulcair. How do you compete with that kind of star power? Oh, it's, I don't want to say it's intimidating, but it's certainly significant. I mean, Ed is a, a dear friend and obviously an icon of our party. He, he brought us to a, a different stage at a, at a different time and is just a fantastic person to have on your team. So all the kudos to Brian. He's, he's uh, secured one of the, the big names, just certainly within the NDP family. But I also know that the New Democratic uh, Party and our members and potential members, which I think is probably the most significant group, also want to decide for themselves. We are inherently free thinkers, independent thinkers, and uh, the people that I talk to are not going to blindly follow one way or the other simply by the set of endorsements that one candidate has or the other. One thing that may affect your decision are the rules. <clears throat> we found out all the rules today. Yeah. What do you make of the decision yesterday by the interim party leader, Nicole Turmel, she was on this show, to allow yeah. Thomas Mulcair to keep his title of deputy leader? Well, everybody else who wants to run will have to give up their critic title, their right. committee chairmanship. The question is, does that give Thomas Mulcair an unfair advantage? Because to be frank, the deputy leader may get more media attention than someone like you. Right. I, well, I can't speak to how you folks in the media will cover us and who you'll give more to and, and whatnot. But let me first start with first things first. I was very much and very publicly in favor of the idea of stripping all formal parliamentary titles from people who are entering the race. I think that's appropriate. This wasp that's by my ear thinks otherwise and is telling me. But uh, it, with respect to uh, Tom and Libby, because Libby Davies is also a deputy leader, so the two of them are considering running. Tom maybe a little more enthusiastically. Um, at first I was a little cautious about it, but uh, since sitting down with caucus and sitting down with the leadership today, I've been assured that there's not going to be any favoritism given. There's not going to be any extra little oomph in our parliamentary work because of that title. And it's, as the term is, honorific. It's a, it's a title without specific roles and duties. Uh, for example, so, so question you've period. So no you've got no problem with he gets to be the deputy leader if he decides to run, but everyone else doesn't get a title. Right, but he, but he is the deputy leader right now. So if he, if he steps down from that title, he's still the deputy leader. I think we, we want to be careful that we focus on the things that truly matter. And what's truly going to matter is who runs a good campaign, who signs up and encourages lots of new progressive people into the party and does a good job. You know, who lights up the room, who lights up the country and makes sure that uh, this resurgence, this renewal of our party continues down the path that Jack set us on. Now, I recognize that Quebec now is the dominant part of your caucus, right? 59 members there. That's but this is a one-member, one-vote, and there's more members in the part of the country where you're from, the right. West. One of the issues that plays differently inside Quebec than outside is the notion of sovereignty, Quebec separatism. Listen right. to what Nicole Tremel said to me yesterday when she was on the show. When I asked her about Brian Topp's statement that Quebec is a nation within Canada and the notion that with 50 plus one, uh, he said they would begin negotiations. Here's what she said. Quebec, if they decide to choose 
or ask for separation or sovereignty, then we said in our platform, we said in our program that we will support them if they decide to do so. The Clarity Act says that you'd have to have a clear majority, widely seen as more than 50 plus one. I asked Stefan Young who wrote it, he said, of course it's more than 50 plus one. Tremel and Top say 50 plus one is the, is the threshold, and the word that Madame Tremel used there was she would support that. What's your view on that? Wrong choice of words, right choice of words, would you stick to that line? I think that, yeah, the distinction in words as explained to me today uh, was the difference between recognize and support. It's, it's amazing to me uh, after what uh, the New Democrats have just accomplished in Quebec, right, which nobody thought was possible. Uh, Quebecers en masse voting for a federalist party, voting uh, w with their feet to say we, we want into this conversation in a forcible way. New Democrats just about wiped out the Bloc Québécois. I'm, I'm expecting bouquets of flowers from all of those folks uh, across the country that were worried about the position of Quebec. I don't know how or why we would walk back into a conversation that isn't happening here in Quebec, right? If, if Quebec is surging forward with these questions and there's a big push uh, from uh, different sectors in society to talk about a referendum again, my goodness, then that's the engagement of the conversation. But Lord help us if we, uh, outside of Quebec, try to instigate that conversation within the boundaries. It's ridiculous. It's the wrong thing to do. I think we need to focus on the things that unite us, not divide us. And Quebecers have many of the same concerns that the people I represent in British Columbia have, as in Manitoba, Saskatchewan, right across this country. All right, uh, final, I got to ask you again. Today we found out that there's four MPs supporting Thomas Mulcair for a potential leadership race. He hasn't, he hasn't uh, declared yet. Right. I, I just want to give you one last shot here, Mr. Cullen. <laughs> I know you're seriously considering it. I know you're looking for uh, winning conditions, as it were, no pun intended there. But yeah. Uh, when will we hear a decision from Nathan Cullen? Are you running? I got, I'm giving myself to the end of this month. Anything beyond September is, uh, is going to feel too long for me. You're either in or out. But that's to get across this country. And, and truly, Evan, this wasn't a subject in my brain. I haven't been moving towards this for weeks and months. This has been something that essentially since the funeral of my good friend uh, and a, a certain call to action, that this was something that I was open to even considering at all. So I, I got to give myself a bit of time, but not too much. Okay. End of the month feels good. All right, let's hold you to that. We'll <laughs> hold you to the end of September. It's on tape now. Nathan Cullen, we've, we've got the interview already booked for the end of September. We'll find a decision. Uh, that's a significantly longer time than Brian Topp uh, has waited, and he's out there. But Nathan Cullen, uh, seeing what's going on, I appreciate your time today, especially under that vicious attack of some kind well, did of you, wasp. Did you and, see that? Yeah, it you didn't even flinch wasp, out there, did you? No, no. I'm well. I'm from the north, man. We're we're kind of tough. That was your first leadership test, right there. We inflict <laughs> plagues of insects on potential wow. candidates. Wow, that's a tough race I'm about to get into. Okay, I'll, I'll consider that as well. All right, well done, Nathan Cullen, BC NDP, MPP.